Modern power plays seldom involve overt military action. The proliferation of nuclear weapons and the status of the United States as the premier superpower who frowns strongly on other countries invading each other are two of the major factors preventing full-scale war. If you look at the past 50 years from a 40,000-foot perspective, it has been one of the most peaceful times in human history, at least in terms of countries invading each other. Don't get me wrong, the sheer number of humans alive today means there's more net misery and strife, but the percentage of them actively engaged in and affected by war is unarguably at an all-time low. This becomes more hazy, however, when you include the internal conflicts, drug wars, civil unrest, and general oppression. There just isn't a good way to compare the social ramifications of governments shutting off the internet to prevent revolt to 14th century nobles overtaxing their peasants. Political and economic leverage has been the name of the game for the past several decades, and there is no greater economic leverage than controlling a nation's water supply. The ability to simply turn off an opponent's water is as close to a weapon of mass destruction that you can get without crossing that invisible line that paints aggressors as truly evil. Control of upriver water supply is critical for the stability of a country. Unfortunately, there are many cases where the headwaters of a major water source may be in a different country than the one which benefits from the majority of that flow. Three current examples of this come to mind, China, Turkey, and Ethiopia. China is building dams on rivers that flow through multiple countries in Asia, including India, Bangladesh, and Thailand. This will allow them to exert as much or as little political pressure as they want on the countries downstream. Oh, you don't like our interference in your politics, Thailand? Well, it sure sucks that there's a drought this season. It would be a shame if the river's flow suddenly dropped. We have seen how China uses international law and pushes the envelope to take as much as possible. They have routinely violated the national waters of every nation in the South China Sea, built islands on reefs as a means to claim more territorial waters and extend their exclusive economic zones, and saber-rattled whenever anyone objected. This is why the United States routinely conducts freedom of navigation exercises in the region, to maintain global trade lanes through waters China likes to pretend belongs to them. This has gotten so bad that even Duterte, the president of the Philippines who was at one point very friendly with China and was actively seeking to switch their alliances to them instead of the US, has become openly hostile and militant in his language towards China. In the Middle East, Turkey is building dams on the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates, which will give them enormous leverage over Iraq. In a region that is so dry and relies so heavily on those two rivers, the amount of power granted by damming those rivers is incalculable. Egypt is in a similar situation with Ethiopia building the Ethiopia Renaissance Dam, which by some estimations could have Egypt's available water for agriculture. And a huge portion of Egypt's economy is still based on agriculture. The point is that one nation's infrastructure project can be another nation's act of war. Now let's apply this to a theoretical situation 50 to 100 years from now. If you are colonizing a planet and then someone pulls into orbit and claims the high orbitals, like the L5 position and an orbiting moon, you would suddenly have to travel through what amounts to foreign territory to simply leave your planet. In one move, you have become a landlocked country, reliant on good relations with another nation for the basic requirements of existence. And yes, a colony would rely on its home country for far longer than you might expect. The more we advance technologically, the more complex our economy becomes, and the more interconnected our supply lines. While 3D printing can greatly alleviate this, there would still be demand for products such as food, high complexity items from home, and those that cannot be 3D printed. Essentially, by setting up a mining colony, one nation could put another nation under siege as easily as Ethiopia can put Egypt under siege. No one needs to say it, they can be on good terms now, but at a moment's notice the situation could become ugly. Some Egyptian politicians have even gone so far as to say they would blow up the dam if Ethiopia attempted to start filling the reservoir once completed. This leads to another terrifying concept, collateral damage. Most of these dams hold enough water to completely obliterate the farms, towns, and cities that live along the rivers they control. The strangled nation can't simply strike the dam if the other nation cuts off their water, because they would be the primary victim of the mass destruction that would follow. 
Likewise, an accidentally sieged colony can't simply strike orbital installations because all those defenders would need to do is drop some iron towards the planet. The kinetic impact from such an attack would be similar to a nuclear explosion. Fortunately, in the future, we will have historical context and know to secure the high orbitals first and hopefully prevent these sort of situations. Please like and subscribe. My social media links are in the description as well as links to my books.